you know, I keep going around saying, I can't believe I'm retired. And then this morning, I, I woke up with a, well, I woke up like at three in the morning or something, and I, I thought, okay, you should get up and pray. And I couldn't even get my eyes open. And I thought, well, yeah, but you used to say, you know, once you weren't working, that, you know, if you were tired, you could go back to sleep now because you didn't have to do a job. And I'm like, maybe we'll start that tomorrow. But anyway, <laughs> I was really tired. And I know those times when I've gotten up and I'm so tired that you just fall asleep and you're sitting in a chair like this for two hours or something. But anyway, I, I gave myself grace. But I went back to sleep. Then I woke up with two crazy dreams, and uh, one of them, I was, I, woke, I was angry. I was angry at this person, and I was really angry, you know, as somebody, you know, the, the, that I, actually somebody I knew from my past many years ago, but just the thought that I was so angry, I started praying, and I said, God, after all these years, why is there, why can I be angry so quick, and uh, so I just I just got, started praying. I just got down on my knees and started praying. And, and, um, and I started forgiving that person because it brought back a memory of something that I don't know if it was him or his brother. And so I just, I, I just started forgiving him and forgiving him for what had happened. And then I started thinking of other people. And I thought, maybe there's a key between that and anger, forgiveness and anger. Because, I mean, the Lord was bringing it to my mind. Then I started forgiving, you know, other people. And, I mean, I was really moved. It was getting passionate to where I was feeling for giving forgiveness and letting it go. And, and, um, and then I remembered um, I was in a thrift store. You know, I, I went in there for one specific thing to look for it. And I wound up getting a book that was stuck in another book that was on forgiveness. And so I'm sitting there this morning thinking, oh, that book, it's still out in my car. I need to go get that book. And I thought, I told Bob, I'm going to spend, I am just going to spend time with the Lord today. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to pray. And I'm just going to, you know, list everybody I can think of in my past and, and just go over this deep forgiveness and everything, you know. And it's going to be awesome. And then the text started coming in. And then this thing happened, and that thing happened. And I said to Bob, you know, at noon or 1, I'm like, I do not know how to do this. I mean, it's like I was going to spend time with the Lord, and all I've been, you know, doing is answering texts and sending texts. And, and um, I don't know if he said, uh, no, you didn't say you'll learn how to do it. I think you said welcome to the world. <laughs> welcome to this world or something like that. But I thought, oh, there's got to be a better way because we do need to spend time with the Lord. We do have to spend time. Shoot me now if this is the way it's going to be, you know. <laughs> but anyway, God is awesome, and we can't do this life without him. We can't love people. We can't forgive people. We can't experience, you know, and even the book that I did. I did get to read that booklet. And, um, and just the things, what forgiveness is and what it isn't. And what, we forgive sin. We don't forgive annoyances. You know, we're irritations, annoyances, all that. You know, we, we get over that stuff. You know, we grow up and get over that stuff. But, but it was awesome. And um, I love being here. I love this church. And I love all of you in it. And I, I love where I'm at. Even I, I told Bob, even with this texting that was going on and there's some issues to deal with. And I thought, this is changing me. I want change, you know, like when you pray and God convicts you of, like, just that thing about me, like, well, maybe I need forgiveness. Why is the anger there? That's all about me. God wants to clean stuff out of me. It's not about looking to somebody else and seeing what they need. God wants us to grow up so we look like him, and there's something awesome in that relationship with him. Just awesome to have a relationship with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe and have him change us, you know, and he's so gentle about it, you know. But anyway, I love you. God bless you. You must want to preach. Hey, Jason, why don't you come? <laughs> You've been back for a week now. Are you still saved? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, got to lead somebody to Jesus yesterday, and then um, my four people got healed downtown, and then went to the prisons, and a bunch of people got healed there. Ray, uh, Raynard told me, he, he told me you had one 
whopping time. It, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy because when I, when I was there in 2011, my, uh, or I think it was 10 when I got there, but my, yeah, it was 10. But my, when my celly, he was like uh, a shot caller for the skinheads, you know, and he just got out of Walla Walla doing a 17-month program. And then he was uh, trying to put me on that. I'm like, dude, that goes against everything, against the Bible, man. You know, and he'd always be messing with me. He's like, why do you always got to keep reading that Bible? I'm like, what difference does it make, man? You know, because our life is a testimony to people. You know, people are watching what you do. You know, so anyways, that guy, he ended, anyways, it was awesome. Jesus put me in that cell so that guy wouldn't, I didn't say nothing, but he wouldn't talk to the other people, so he left me alone, so I didn't have to deal with none of that. God's just whatever. You know, but the thing was, is one of the guys kept coming to the bars who was his friend, you know. And I prayed for people for probably a solid two and a half years after I left there. I just kept praying for, you know, Jesus to send them people to encourage them. Father, draw them onto you. Save them, God. Increase all the seeds planted in their life. And then uh, when we went to WSR, I mean, this is one of the people you'd never believe are going to get saved, you know. We went to WSR on Wednesday. That dude was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, then, when, then when I was preaching, I just felt like to stop, and I go, well, does anybody else have any pain in their body? And then he was standing away in the back, and he looked like this all crazy. And then the other guy goes, go up there, man. So he comes up there, and then um, prayed for him, and uh, Jesus grew his leg out and healed his back, and he was straight flipped out. You know? <laughs> so it was cool, man. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but it was really awesome to encourage those guys. It's like, hey, man, you know, I mean, I don't know if you realize this or not, but you're here in prison, and this is your mission field. You know, and you, you know, it says, he who believes in me will do the same things that I do and greater, because it goes to the Father, you know, but, it, but none of that stuff won't happen unless you do it on purpose, because it took, I don't know if Miles is here, it took Miles downtown, yeah, it took Miles downtown, and he was uh, scared to death, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, mirac miracles are on the other side of our comfort zone, you know, I mean, it's, it's normal when you go up to go talk to somebody, and your throat gets all clammy, and your hands, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right, Tony? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so... I don't think it's weird. It's part. Some people don't have a problem with it, but I still have to press to it. You know. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. you. Love you, man. Love you too, man. Right. Do me a favor and turn that thing so it's blowing someplace else. Okay, I'm in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter, um, chapter 3. The Lord, open your word again and speak to our hearts. And I ask, Lord, to uh, give us the words that we live by. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Proverbs 3. I think we got down to around verse 9. Is that right? Okay, so I'm going to just start in verse 9. <clears throat> um, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Uh, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So... Faith isn't some spooky thing. You know, I have faith. No, no, faith comes by me hearing what he has said. And so faith causes expectation to rise on the inside of me because his word, his word gives me promises and his word tells me what he's like, what he will do, what he will not do, what he blesses, what he curses, etc., etc. And so... So if I put myself in the right place, I can put myself in the place where a curse is going to come on me. Or I can remove myself from that and put myself in a place where a blessing is going to come on me. And, so, and I'm the one who chooses that. <clears throat> and um, and they, said to, they said, what must we do to be saved? <clears throat> and, and, and Peter said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus. When I believe on Jesus, I'm not just believing on a name. I'm not believing on a person who lived 2,000 years ago. I'm believing who he is, 
what he did and what he said. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And so, so, so um, you know, a lot of people believe, believe uh, about the historical Jesus, but Jesus said um, uh, it was, um, was Thomas that said, he said, my Lord and my God. Amen? <clears throat> and, and who is he? Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. Amen? And so, grace and truth. And so, and so Jesus comes and Jesus said, whoever hears my sayings and does them, I'll liken him to a wise man. Built his house on a rock. So, so the Lord gives us promises. And, and the promise that he gives us is the open door. It's the access for me to become like him. Amen? The Bible says, the Bible says um, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And so, and so the word of God is not a word, it's throughout the whole Bible. He's got word after word after word after word. That as I take them and I believe them and I act on them, I'm changed by them. And so, he's, and so he says right here, he says, honor the Lord with your possessions. And so, so Solomon's writing it, but he's, but he's giving the truth that God has given to him. The truth that his father taught him. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty. And, and Old, Old Testament, Old King James, and your vats burst forth with new wine. And so, so if I want my barns to be filled with plenty, he said, the Lord says, honor me with your possessions and with the first fruits. If I get $10, the first dollar is God's. If I get $100, the first 10 is God. If I get $1,000, the first 100 Amen? Amen. That's, what he's, that's what he's talking about. That's what he's saying. Honor the Lord with your pe- possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your v- vats will burst forth with new wine. And so if I want, if I want my barns to be filled with pl- plenty, my vats to brace, burst forth with new wine, I want to be happy and I want to be in a good place in life, then, then take that step. Do that step. Amen? Okay. So he says, um, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the father, the son, in whom he delights. The Lord, as he receives every one of us, when I, when I ask Jesus to come in, when I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of Christ comes in, I, am, I have now been given the authority for me to become a son of God. Before that, I don't have the authority. I may become a good X, Y, Z, but, but I don't have the authority to become a son of God until the Spirit of Christ comes in. The Bible says, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's not one of his. And so, but when the Spirit of Christ comes in, now I have the authority for me to become a son of God. And, and, and as I'm growing into sonship, as I'm growing up in him. In the church, we have fathers, we have mothers, we have brothers, we have sisters, and, and we find ourselves being like in a, the Bible says he puts the solitary into families. And I find myself in a family whenever I come to God. Amen? He puts me in a family, and in the family, I begin to be instructed, here's the way you live. In every, every one of our houses that we were raised in, there was, there was a standard for that house. Well, the standard was you drink all week and do drugs, or the standard was you live a godly and a righteous life, you know. But whatever house we were raised in, that's what we learned. Amen? But in God's house, we start to learn God's ways. And God pays attention. God is paying attention to you if you're his child. He's paying attention to what you do and don't do. Amen? Even a child is known by his, by his actions, whether they're good or whether they're evil. Amen? And he knows us. The Lord pays attention to us. And, 
And the Lord doesn't just, just, you know, oh, it's okay, just forget it. No, no, he's paying attention. Because if I'm a child of God, you know what he wants? He wants me to bring glory and honor to him. He wants me to become like him. The Bible calls it the church of the firstborn. Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. Amen? So Jesus is my savior, and Jesus is my older brother. Amen? And so, so, so the Lord wants, I'm gonna, I'll quote the ver- verse I quote to you a lot of times. He says in Ephesians, he said, uh, Jesus went down into, in, into hell, and he ascended up on high, and he gave gifts to men. He gave uh, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to bring to maturity, the old King James says it, says it this way, for the perfecting of saints, for the work of the ministry. So perfecting is to bring to maturity the saints. That's you and me. Amen? We're no longer sinners. We're saints. To bring to maturity the saints so that they can, do the work, they can learn how to do the work of ministry. So that the body of Christ can be edified until, or, or edified is to be built up to build up the body of Christ until we all come in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. What's a perfect man? The fullness of the stature of the image of Christ. That's what God wants. And so that's where God wants to take us. And so not just anything is okay. Amen? uh, What he wants is for me to be growing in him and for me to be, be becoming like him. And so he says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor de- detest his correction. Because, because the Lord knows how to chasten and how to correct us. And um, it's, it's not good for a man to be without knowledge. I was driving home last night, and I was listening to a Christian program, and this brother was saying how, how his friend got hurt, he lost his hands, and he lost his feet, and, and this guy was praying for God to heal his brother, give him back his hands and his feet, and, and he prayed, and he fasted, and he did all kinds of stuff, and it didn't happen, and he got angry at God. He got so angry at God, and so, got so bitter about it, and and, um, and, and all this happened until he went to some kind of a, uh, of a, um, uh, some kind of a meeting where he, where he heard the man who lost his hands and his feet testifying about the good things that were happening in his life, be, you know, because of the fact that he lost his hands and his feet. We don't wish that on anybody. I don't know what Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm not sure Jesus would, would, would see it differently than, than we would see it insofar as uh, flesh is concerned. But this guy was getting something good, and, and this guy was getting bitter. He was getting bitter because, God, you're not answering my prayer, and you're not taking care of my friend the way I would do it, and so I'm mad at you. And... and um, and the Lord wants, you know what the Lord wants? He wants the image of Christ in us. He wants the attitudes of Jesus in us. Amen? He wants the ways of God inside of us. Moses said to God, he said, you said I found grace in your sight. Amen? And he said, if I found grace in your sight, your ways so that I might know you, so that I might find grace in your sight. Because I'm going to this afternoon, then I'm going to tomorrow, then I'm going to tomorrow night, and then I'm going to next year, and I'm going to 10 years, and as long as I live, I'm going into the future. And stuff can happen along the way that if I don't understand, and I don't know how to carry myself, and how to look at it right, I can get very bitter. And the Bible says, beware lest there be in any of you. Uh, no, no, not that one. Yeah, that's a good verse too. Yeah, an evil heart of unbelief in, de- in departing from the living God. It's an evil heart when you, when you depart from God. But he says, he says, uh, he said, looking diligently lest, lest uh, any root of bitterness 
spring up, whereby many shall be defiled. So, so, um, so we're to be looking lest any man fail of the grace of God. Because people can fail of the grace of God. And looking, I can't remember exactly, I'm losing the verse right now. Someone pray for me, please. <laughs> anyway, you know, so that, um, because, because, you know, he said, lest there be in any of you any root of bitterness springing up whereby many shall be defiled. And then the very next thing that he says, lest there be any fornicator or unclean person as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. So what's the very first thing, the very first thing after the bitterness comes? He, he, he names first sexual sin, a fornicator. And so, so he says, be careful. You got you to be, you gotta be, be careful for your attitude. Is that whenever the Lord begins to take you through things, you don't have to understand everything in life. And you're going to go through some things you don't understand. But here's what's important, that you have the right, under, the right attitude when you don't understand. Because your attitude will put you on a path. And if your attitude puts you on the wrong path, when you get there, you'll be there. Amen? It'll take you where you don't want to go. And so, so he, says, he says, My son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. You know, if you, if you correct a fool, you know what he feels like? Who are you? Who are you to say anything to me? You know? And you know, it happens whenever you correct a fool, you... you yeah, you know, you know what the fool's going to do? Well, here's what I got to say to you. Here's what, the way I see you. Rather than, hmm, let me think about that. Amen or oh me? And so he, the Lord doesn't want us to be morons. Amen? He, he, listen, he gave me two eyes and two ears and one mouth. And he said, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Am I doing all right? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as the father, the son in whom he delights. In God's house, so-so is not good enough. Amen? Amen. Yeah, that's okay. We won't say anything. Just, just let it go. No, no, no. No, the Lord's looking to bring us along. Why? I'm to be like him. I'm a son of God. Amen? And so he wants, he wants me to, to be conformed to the image of Christ. Christ who is the express image of God. And so God knows how to get me there and God knows what I need to get me there. And... And one of the things that he gives me along the way to help me to get there is he gives me pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people don't like it whenever you preach that. Some people get really angry whenever you preach that. God's not like that. My God's not like that. And I say, well, okay, your God isn't. Throw yours away and get the one in the Bible. <laughs> Amen? Because, because he says in his word, he said, it's not... It's not only given to you to believe on the Lord Jesus, it's given to you to suffer for his namesake. Amen? Okay, because, in, in, you know, in, in, in many times, the suffering is chastening from the Lord to, to you know, you know how, you know how we, here, I'm going to tell you, I'm just, can I just talk about me for a minute? I don't want to hurt your feelings. And if it hurts your feelings, well, then get over it. I, I have found in my life, there have been times when I felt like, can't you just tell me? Do you have to put me in this place where I have to endure long suffering? I would like to just learn it. Can you just write it for me? I learn it, and there, you know. I, but, but sometimes that doesn't change character. 
Amen? And what the Lord wants is proven character. And proven character gets, you know, um, you don't change. If you dig raw ore out of the earth and it's iron, it's iron. It's iron if it's in, in its uh, crystal form or whatever it is. It's iron, just as much iron there as it is whenever you melt it and change its shape. It's still iron. A amen or oh me. But if you want to use that iron for different purposes, you got to melt it. And if the iron could talk to you, it'd say, what are you doing? Amen or oh me? And then if you want to make it into a, a, uh, an I-beam or a steel girder or anything like that, you pour a little ore, a, a little alloy in there and, and send it through those. They, have, they don't have a... They don't have a, a, a smithy with an anvil anymore who goes death by banging on the metal. They, they send it through machines with thousands of pounds of pressure that as it's passing through, it goes bang and hits this, this white hot or this red hot piece of, of uh, steel that's going through the machines because it's changing the molecular structure of that of that piece of metal so that that piece of metal can endure what it couldn't if you didn't change it. Amen? And God does that with us as he sends us through this process of chastening. And if I don't endure chastening, and I want to tell you something, I didn't endure chastening. When I was a young man, I had no idea what was going on. And I'd, I remember going to church with my first wife, because the pastor of the church that we left came back and he came over and, and he invited us to go to church. And I thought, okay, that's good. Let's go to church. To church. And we got in church. And after we were there for a little while, my marriage started to get on the rocks. And I thought, if this is what, if this, is what this gives me, I quit. Because I was an ignoramus. And, and I wasn't as, he said, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. But if you don't, he said, you're illegitimate. I was illegitimate. And it wasn't until I finally bowed my knee to, knees to God and I said, whatever, that, that I was, I became a real son of God. And it's whatever he wanted to do. And he could take me and do whatever he wanted to do in me and with me. And, and, I would, and I would endure it. And I would try and learn what are you doing with me along the way here. And how do I need to see it so that I can make it through this? Because I want to walk with you. And I want to be your son all the way. Because there was one thing in life that counted. And that's being a Christian. Amen? Nothing else counted like that. Hallelujah. Okay. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the Father, the Son, in whom he delights. That's what it is. It's the Son in whom the Father delights. And as he delights in us, he delights to take us and, and make of us a... Um, he wants to set us on his mantle and make a showpiece out of us before the world. Amen? And the world wants to make a show out of you. The world wants you to look like a donkey. Amen? If you're a son of God, the world wants you to look like a, a donkey because the world has no love for Jesus. Amen or oh me? Yeah, Jesus said, if they love me, they'll love you. But if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Okay, verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happier are all those who retain her. Verse 13, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. The man who finds, you know how you find wisdom? You search for it. 
Amen? You search for it. There, there are, you know, I remember reading in, in, jo, in Job, you know, there is a vein where the silver is uh, uh, mined and a place where the gold is refined. There, there are veins. And, there, and I, found, I found the place for wisdom was the word of God. Because wisdom is the right answer. Wisdom is the ability to make the best choice. If you, you know, and so it's the, it's, wisdom is the ability to process things correctly. Because you can be, you can be, uh, um, you can have 25 doctorates and, and, and come up with the thing of there's no God. And you know what God says you are? He said you're a moron. God says you're a fool. The fool is said in his heart there is no God. So I don't care how smart you are, that doesn't mean a hill of beans. But wisdom is the ability to get the right answer so that life works. Amen? And so happy is the man who, you, you don't find, you don't just all of a sudden, I just stumbled onto wisdom and there it was. If I stumble onto wisdom, it's because someone in front of me gave me the answer that I needed to have, that he, was, that he had enough wisdom to know the right answer and, and there was enough sense in me to listen and hear what he has to say. Because there's a lot of people who have wisdom and there's a lot of us who are so ignorant that we cast it aside like, who wants that? Amen? And usually, whenever the Lord gives us his answer, his wise answer, and shows us his wise way, if my own flesh hasn't been subdued, if I haven't learned how to submit myself to God, I can be a moron in that I want to fight against what the Lord is saying. Because, because that is humiliating. Amen or owe me? And the Lord says, humble yourself under his mighty hand. And if you don't humble yourself, the circumstances in life may humiliate you. Amen? Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Because that is to be gained. And understanding, to me, is applying the knowledge that God gives you to your life. Amen or oh me? God, God wants to talk to us about a whole, he wants to talk to us about life. He wants to talk to us about every kind of different circumstance in life. You want to do good in business? God wants to talk to you about it. You want to have a good marriage? God wants to talk to you about it. You want to raise that, that, um, that you're proud of and that glorify God? God wants to talk to you about it. You, you, I don't care what God wants to talk to you about it. He wants to talk to you about it so that, so that, and he wants you to hear him so that you make your way prosperous because God's not going to make your choice. God's going to leave it to you. Amen? So that you make your way prosperous and you have good success. There are some people who have success, but it's wonderful success here, but it's a disaster other places. That ain't good success. Amen or oh me? It's the truth. Listen. There are people in this church that, have, that had what looked like success that other people would drool to have, but, but it wound up being destroyed marriage, destroyed uh, um, reputation, destro and, and now in a different place in life, and it's not a fun place. Amen or oh me? And so God says, I want you to have good success because, because little things that we like to, you know, we would like to think, well, I can do this, and what's it hurting anybody? But this little thing that, that I'm involved in that I don't think is hurting anybody may be the very thing that is sinking my ship. I'm sitting here in the, in the boat with everybody else, and it's a wooden boat, and I got my knife out, and I'm carving a hole. You know, <laughs> what's with you? It's my knife. It's just a little hole. Her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. 
She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Listen, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And so, so he says, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. You know, I can go after silver. I could go after gold, I could go after rubies, I could go after, I want to make my fortune. And then after I've made my fortune, I'll get around to God. But the Lord says, I want you to find wisdom. I want you to, I want you to, to go after wisdom and I want you to get, under, get wisdom, get knowledge with all you're getting, get understanding. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and the right way of thinking. The right way of seeing things. Amen? We have these houses. And, and we call them hot houses. Because there's a lot of quick, rapid growth in the houses. Because you're in the house with other people. And, and depending on, you know, who it is. The people come in. And they come into the house. And it's like, uh, you know, good, here's a wonderful now, if you'll just do it this way, I'll be comfortable. But everybody doesn't do it the way I want them to. And they don't make, they're not too interested in making me comfortable. They want to, for them to be comfortable. But when they're comfortable, I'm not comfortable and I'm not happy. Amen or oh me. And so we have to learn how to give and take and do what we got to do to get along. Amen. Hot houses, a lot of quick growth or, or a lot of moving. <clears throat> Amen or oh me? Okay. So the Lord says, Her profits are, are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. All the things you may desire. I remember reading this as a young Christian and thinking, okay. That's where I'm supposed to focus my energy. That's where I'm supposed to focus my thought and, and uh, my attention to gain, to get what God wants me to get. Because when I first started, you know, I, I, I could read four pages and get one thought out of four pages in reading the Bible. It's not that way anymore. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. So if you want a longer day, the ability to get more stuff done... Length of days, it get wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. And so, as I'm, if I'm walking with wisdom, it's, it's not that you don't have trouble. You will, you will, the Bible says, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. The scripture says, man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. And so, so if you haven't had any trouble yet today, hang on. Yours is coming. <laughs> yeah, so so there's, there's plenty of trouble to go around. But the question is, do I have in me what I need so that I can get through it pleasantly? Amen? I was, uh, I, I went to Costco to get some gas yesterday, and I, there was a car, line of cars coming this way, and I pulled in front, and I went, and this guy felt like that I got there, I, I, I took his place, and so, so I'm, you know, in Costco going to get to the, to the, to the, where you go get your gas, you know, to the gas pumps. There's all these cars lined all up, and he comes, and goes right around me, and I thought, okay, brother. Enjoy, hallelujah, you know. You know, you, you watch people who get road rage and, they, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, I'll get my bat and get out of the car and hit them between the eyes and all that kind of stuff. Eh, hallelujah. Now you ask my wife, I know saint whenever it comes to driving. <laughs> but, but we not, you have to know how to, to deal with things so that, because you, if you allow, you can allow something that is, that is nothing to become something that is great big and something you can hardly deal with and something that changes your whole day and it can change your whole life. Amen? 
you, you can open your mouth and say some dumb thing that, that, that you don't even really believe. But because of the moment and because there is a lack of control on the inside, wah, 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 I got stuff to say and I just changed everything and my whole life can change because of it. Amen. Length of days in her right hand, her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are way, wisdom. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. So the way she does it, it's pleasant. All her paths are peace. Hmm. Wisdom is God. God has made Christ unto us wisdom. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. Who is he? He's the prince of peace. What's the kingdom that's, that, that's his kingdom on the inside of you? It's the kingdom of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And it's that way on purpose because the effect of righteousness is peace. That's Bible. The effect of thinking it right, seeing it right, saying it right, doing it right is peace. But if you don't see it right and you don't say it right, you might wind up with a fight. Amen or oh me. And sometimes you will wind up with an argument, a fight, on purpose. Because, you know, if you want to bring something that's wrong, and someone else who sees it right and says, no, don't do that. You can do that for you if you want to, but don't do that to affect me. Amen or oh me? Okay. So he says, her ways are ways of pleasant, all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Happy are all who retain her. God wants us to get wisdom. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. That's pretty heavy. That's pretty heavy. God wants us to get wisdom. He, by, by wisdom, he founded the earth. By understanding, he estab established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down the dew. You know, when you stop and you think... There's so many variables and so many things going on all the time. Stuff that we know nothing about. You know, you, we, are, we, we live on a ball that on the inside of it, it is so hot. There is a fire in there that is so hot. Well, it would consume you like that. Amen? Yeah, and you know, we don't ever think about that at all. Never, we never think, but all that stuff is so necessary. And you've got other planets that are around here, and, and, and a moon, and the, and, and the tides in the sea are affected by, who made all that stuff? How in the world, why doesn't the earth just go buzzing through, through the atmosphere? Because God put it all in its place, and there's a circuit that we, that we flow in because of the wisdom of God. Amen, Romy. We're, we're sitting here, and we're not thinking about it, and you're growing hair. Amen. You're sitting here, and you're not thinking about it, and you're digesting your food. Unless it's upsetting your stomach. <laughs> the Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. <laughs> You know, I, I know in this ministry, this is the way that we started it. I, I've watched God along the way work with different circumstances that if, if a different word or a different thought, a different way would have been taken, it would be a totally different ministry. <laughs> Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. And the thing God wants us to get is his wisdom so that because, you know, if her ways are ways of pleasantness. Well, let, me, let, me, let me just talk to you for just a second. Let me just talk to house leaders. The Bible says that David, David was anointed to be the king of Israel. And, and so, and, but he was still, the Bible calls him, he was a stripling. He was about 15 years old, lived in, in his dad's house. And he kept his father's sheep. And, but his dad said to him, I want you to take this, this, um, this donkey, and he puts all these um, 
all these grapes and all this food and all this kind of stuff on this donkey. He says, take it down and, and, and take it to the army and, and see how your brothers are doing. So David goes down there. And David hears them, he hears Goliath down there taunting the whole Israel, of, all the army of Israel. And David says, who's that dude? Who do you think he is? Speaking like that to the army of God. And David says, listen, David said, what will happen for the guy who kills him? Yeah, yeah, he asked that question. And they told him, his, he won't have to pay taxes. His father's house won't, won't have to pay taxes. Amen? And, and, uh, and I can't remember what else. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 here's, so here's David. No, he's, he's just a kid, but, but God chose him to do a job. And he goes down there, and he winds up going out after Goliath in a battle. And, and the, you know, you heard the story. The king puts his coat of mail on him, puts his helmet on him and all that. And David looks like he's, he's, he's dressed in his grandfather's clothes, like he's a little boy, you know. And he starts to walk with this stuff. And he said, man, I'm going to get killed in this. I don't know how to use this stuff. He takes it all off. And, 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 and he goes down to the brook and he gets five smooth stones. He handpicks five and he sticks them in his pouch and he goes out and, and the Bible says whenever Goliath saw him, Goliath said, come here and I'll feed you to the birds. And the Bible says David ran to the battle. And David reached in and he took out one stone and whoosh, and pow! And that thing hit Goliath right between the eyes and Goliath went down. And David went over and took his own sword. David didn't have a sword. All he had had with stones and he took his sword and cut his head off and he walked away with the head of Goliath and he changed the course of everything and all of a sudden David moved the king said I want that kid moving and living in my house and David was living in the king's house and in time the king recognized everybody likes David more than they like me he was coming back into the camp and the women were out there singing and they're singing, Saul has killed his thousands. David is ten thousands. And Saul looks at him and says, he's got, he's got their hearts. The only thing he lacks is my throne. I'm going to kill him. And so Saul goes out to kill him. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accident. And so here's David and and David has been anointed to be the king, but now the anointing, the Bible says whom God calls, he qualifies. And David is in qualification, and the anointing takes him out of the king's house, and David's living in, in a cave. And the scripture says, everybody who is in debt, everybody who is in distress, and everybody who is disgraced, all dissed. And they came to David. And he began to take them and make an army out of them. Now, now listen to me. That's something every leader learns how to do. You, you, can, you can see David. Yeah, get over there. Yeah, do that. You know, well, David's got to win their hearts. They, they, they found, they wanted to please David. Amen? They wanted to please him so bad that whenever they got in a war, and, and David says, man, I wish I had some water from the well of Bethlehem. Guys risk their life to break through the enemy to go get him water and bring it back to him. And when they brought it to him, David said, this is their life. I can't, I can't, I can't drink this in good conscience. And he poured it out. Amen? Uh, you know, there was a heart in him that had to be developed. God wants to develop that in us. So that, you know, be, and, and that's wisdom. That's wisdom that God wants to give us. You don't get that just by, by reading something. You, um, you, uh, we get it by applying our hearts and doing it the way God wants us to and going through the difficult things that are, are, that are given to us to shape us because in the midst of the difficulty, you could see David. David could say, 
You know, David had opportunity. He had two, two different opportunities where he could kill Saul. And his men told him, God delivered him into your hands. Just, give me, just say the word. I'll stick a javelin and he'll, it'll be all done. And, and one time, David, when Saul came into the, tent, into the cave that David and his, all, and his men, it was a big cave. Because David had his couple of hundred men with him, and he was in the cave. And so, and his eyes are used to the dark. And Saul comes in there to go to the bathroom. That's what he did. And Saul said they're going to the bathroom. David came up, and David cut the hem of his robe off. But after David cut the hem of his robe off, the Bible says, his heart smote him. That's the deal. That's the deal. It's what's going on in here. That's what made him effective. His heart smote him. And whenever Saul got out of the camp and got a little way away, David said, Saul. And he called him. And he told him what he'd done. He said, you were in my hands and I could have killed you, but I didn't. Why? Not because of you, but because of him and because of the way he wants things done. I know I'm following him and I know I'm going after him for him to, to put me where he wants me. Amen? Okay, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By wisdom, you will found your own house. By wisdom, you will found your ministry. By wisdom, you'll see the blessing of God come. With the, with, to the degree that you go after and you uh, attain wisdom. You'll find, your, you'll find your ministry, your marriage, your, your family established, founded. And by understanding, he established the heavens. <clears throat> this guy was walking down the beach. And he was just kicking up sand. And all of a sudden, he kicked something and it was hard. And he picked it up. And it was one of those lamps. And he cleans it all off, and this genie appeared. And this genie said, Long time, and you don't get three wishes, you get one wish. And so, so he says, Hurry up. And the guy says, One wish. He said, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm so afraid of the ocean. I'm afraid of, I'm, I'm afraid of flying. What if you built me a highway from California to Hawaii? And the, and the genie said, are you nuts? Do you know anything about the strength of currents and all that kind of stuff? Give me another wish. And he said, he said, I was raised by my mother and I had a couple of sisters. And I never have been able to understand women. Could you give me an understanding of women? And he says, do you want two lanes or four lanes? <laughs> By understanding, he established the heavens. Amen. God wants us to get understanding. We can get understanding to, to the degree that we can. Amen. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down their dew. It's not good for a man to be without knowledge. I, you know, you know I, I heard one time, promote your strengths and manage your weaknesses. And some people go off to to um, do everything they can to overcome their weaknesses. But promote your strengths and manage your weaknesses because your strengths are what God has given you. Your strengths are what, what comes natural to you and they'll put you in, in the right place. So promote your strengths. But we all have weaknesses. Manage them. Amen? And so... I'm really gra I, I'm, I'm so grateful for the team that God has given me. It's such an awesome team. You know, whenever it comes to understanding computers, 
I know how to go in there and unscrew the thing and take it all apart so that Barb could take all the computers back to, back to Alaska Airlines. But whenever it came to setting the router back up, et cetera, et cetera, it was like I, I called and I said, can you help me? And Barb says, I think I could do it. She did with the help of my son. Yeah, it's good to have knowledge. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you'll walk safely in your way. Your foot will not stumble. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom. Let them not depart from your eyes. You know, it's a good thing. The Lord, the Lord says... He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God, and in his law he meditates day and night. Amen? Mm -hmm. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf will not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. Who is that guy? He meditates in your word day and night. Amen. He doesn't just run with anybody. He doesn't just sit with anybody. Amen. He doesn't align himself with just anybody. There are people that, that he allows into his circle and people he doesn't allow into his circle. Amen or oh me. And so, so he says, let them not depart from your eyes. I got to keep the Bible in front of me. Amen. Because it's amazing how fast... Something can get away from me, but just reading it again, because the word is alive, the, Lord, the word speaks to me. Amen or oh me? Yeah. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace and gra to your neck. Grace to your neck. What in the world is that? Grace to your neck. The Lord called the children of Israel. He said they're stiff-necked. You, you ever see a, a stiff-necked kid? <clears throat> My kids, whenever they were little, it, go to tell them something, and you'd see when they get mad, and they're going to just, they're not going to do whatever. <clears throat> and, and that helps them to stiffen their neck up. I mean, to, 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 uh, to, to get a little grace in there amen now i was afraid to have any i was afraid to have a if i got a stiff neck around my dad i'd have a broken neck <laughs> but the lord says he doesn't want us to be in a place where we can't hear he says bow down your ear to hear the words of the wise he wants us to be in a place where okay i know you stepped on my toes just now it's all right I'm here to hear. Amen? I'm here to grow. I, 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 I'm not walking, I'm not the walking answer. I got it all and don't need anything. But I'm continually growing and increasing. Amen or oh me? Yeah, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you'll walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you'll not be afraid. You'll, yes, you'll lie down and your sleep will be sweet. That's an awesome thing to be able to just lay down and just fall asleep. Amen? And not be worried and troubled over whatever. Do not be afraid of sudden terror nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. That's in, that's in, that's in um, giving to help. That's in giving to pay. That's in repaying debts. That's in whatever it is. If I've got it by me, if I've got it in my pocket, I have the ability to take care of the need that's in front of me. Amen? You know why? Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if I want other people to be skin flints, and I want them to be stingy with me, 
You know what I'm saying? And I, and I don't want them to treat me fairly, then treat other people unfairly. Amen? But if it's, in the, if it's the power of my hand to take care of it, take care of it now. I'll send somebody down the street without what is due, what's rightfully their due. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without a cause, if he has done you no harm. He says in, in, uh, in uh, the Pentateuch, he said, don't go with a group to, um, to cause trouble. I can't remember how the verse goes right now. But you know how, you know how continually... In, in, uh, when it comes to politics and political things, and especially today, one side's trying to pull you all the way over here and wants you to look at the other side like, like um, Balak wanted Balaam to look at Israel. And the other side wants you to pull, pull, pull you all the way over here. And, and, and I, you know... I, li- I like to be aware of issues. I like to be aware of what's going on. I want to know. I don't want to be an ignoramus and just go along just because so-and-so said so. I look at what people do. Amen? Because what you do speaks real loud. And, and in, if what you're doing is ungodly, what you're doing is against me because it's against God. And it's, be, uh, it's against what is right. Amen? And so we don't just go with the crowd because the crowd is saying that. And, and I have a D out that I vote for, or I have an, a, uh, uh, a R that I, you know what I'm saying, I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican, so therefore I go with whatever the, that side of the issue is. Now, why don't you listen? Why don't you pay attention? What really is going on? Amen? Because stuff that really is wrong may be, may be happening, and I'm just throwing my voice in with the rest of it whenever it's not right. Amen or oh me? Don't get mad because I'm preaching good. Do not strive with a man without cause if he's done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. There there are... um, One of the things that we really lack in America today are heroes. We have history out out of the class. We don't know history as it should be. And we don't have heroes that are true heroes before our people today. You know who our heroes are? He's the basketball player. He's the football player. He's the baseball player. And so you got heroes that really, you know, he's a basketball player and he's he's a whoremonger. And he's a football player and he's, you know what I'm saying? And so whatever he's up to, that's what he's up to. And so you put that in front of your kids and you got some parents who make sure that their kids are all involved in that. Really? Are your kids getting the Bible? Are they getting a way of of learning and understanding? I know we're not talking about people who got a bunch of kids. Although, you know, your life will affect kids. Amen or oh me. It will. And... And, uh, and what I, what I go for and what, what I, uh, what I receive, what I, um, he says, don't envy the oppressor. There's, there's the wrong kind of people to envy and there's the right ones. There's the, there's the right kind of people to put up as heroes. That's why in the scripture, God gives us heroes that are his true heroes. And you know what? The Lord isn't ashamed to show the whole picture. David was a man after God's own heart. But man, David screwed up really bad. Amen or oh me. Amen. And Paul, Paul and Barnabas were doing just awesome. Paul was an awesome man of God after God got hold of him. But Paul and Barnabas had, an out, had, had a, a problem rise between them and the friction was so great, they split up company. And you never heard of Barnabas again? Paul. Amen or oh me? And so the Lord wants the right heroes in front of us and the right people for us to emulate. Paul said, emulate me. Amen. And so, hallelujah. So I'm going to quit right there. I preached long enough. <laughs>